It's Wednesday, June 30th here at the West End Gun Club. I'm here on the Rimfire Range getting set up to run through the July 2021 NRL 22 course of fire. It was published several days ago. So if you're um, going to shoot a match in July, definitely go check out the NRL 22 website and pull down that course of fire so you can become familiar with the, uh, the stages. And of course, if you're watching this video, then you'll see me run through all the different stages. I've got the props set up. Uh, Gonna set out the targets. Uh, had the targets ready to go after the last match because we shot the last match just a few days ago on Sunday, uh, last Sunday. And uh, so when I put all the targetry away, I just set, went ahead and put the correct targets on the stands and I had those ready to go so I can uh, lay it out when I came out here this week or today to uh, run through the run through. So it just saved me a few, few uh, minutes of my time today. Uh, anyway, it's getting a little warm already. It's kind of, it, the, what's killing it is it's humid right now. Um, already sweating, but uh, uh, we'll make the best of it today. And it's really quiet right now. Um, I came in around just a little bit before seven. There was like only one guy on the main range. There's no gunshots here on the private base. It just seems like every week that goes by, it seems like the amount of shooters on the range is just dropping. And everyone pretty much equates that to just ammo. People are just right now, they're really low on their stock and they're not shooting because they want to keep their stuff in reserve maybe for the matches if they shoot matches or just for you know emergency use so uh people claim that they're seeing more come into the stock in the stores and i think that's relatively true but i just think that people are still scooping that up and they're just keeping it and not using it so you know the rec shooters just aren't taking the you know they're buying it and they're just storing it they're not even bothering to shoot it so uh i don't know I, I anticipate this will continue on at least for the next several months uh, into next year. So, uh, plus the matches I've heard their um, their participation has dropped, and even last Sunday we only had ten shooters. So, uh, it just seems like that ammo supply is just really curbing people's uh, their shooting their shooting habits. Anyway, let's get finished set up so we can actually start shooting. What I was doing earlier when I said I was going to re-zero or reconfirm my scope, I basically just changed my zero from 25 yards to 50 yards. I was zeroing for 25 yards for the past several months, maybe 12 months or so. Um, I just felt that 25, a 25 yard zero with rimfire is really good to eliminate wind. Um, but I think that's fine for a windage issue, like just for windage. So if you want to zero, confirm your windage zero at 25, I would do that. But for elevation in RL22, it seems like 25 yards is probably not a good idea because what happens with a 25 yard zero is you're actually gonna get a hit 0.3 or three tenths of a mil high at 50. And so when you wanna, when it comes down to just like holding over and under, you might confuse yourself for the most part when you have a 25 yard zero and then you're varying targets between 25 and 100. So I feel like a 50 yard zero makes more sense in that you're, more, you're less likely to shoot closer than 50 yards and when you are on NRL 22, it's easier to understand, hey, I'm just gonna hold a little bit under on these targets for the close range and not have to bother dialing those. And then when it comes to just holding over for farther targets, it seems more natural. Um, Cause it's gonna feel kind of weird when you have a 25 yard zero and you're holding under for, for 50 yards because 50 yards is longer than 25. So holding under for a farther distance, just it might confuse you in the long run, especially when you're um, 
again, when you have multiple targets between 25, 50, 75, and 100. So it just makes more sense to have it at 50, know that you're gonna hold under at 25, and you're just gonna hold naturally over beyond 50 yards. I think from a mental standpoint, that's just a little less confusing. So anyway, that's what I did, and we'll see how that goes. That being said, let's go ahead and do start the run through the July 2021 NRL 22 course flyer. The first stage we're gonna run through is called Summer Yard Sale. 122nd part time, 10 rounds. Uh, this range is 100 yard max, so we're gonna be using the option one on, on, the, on the entire course of fire. So option one for this one is a three inch target at 100 yards. There's only one target for this stage. We're gonna start standing, rifle all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with two shots in the following prop order. The tire, a five gallon bucket, two gallon bucket, seat of the chair under the backrest. So right here, under the backrest, and the bottom shelf of the sawhorse right here. All props are positioned as pictured, and I have them as pictured in order. Facing down range, tire, five gallon bucket, two gallon bucket, seat or start chair, and the sawhorse. Uh, it's really straightforward. Uh, it's a really straightforward run through. Single target, just two shots each one. So it's very straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and run through it, see how it goes. That was a little harder than I expected. Uh, I think it's the fact that you're building five positions. You're building five positions at 120 seconds. So a uh, little problem with this, I need to, I forgot to get the uh, little little uh, stilt to get this angle up. Uh, that's gonna be a problem for some people. Um, how you approach this is the question because I had two bags. I was running two bags, this one, uh, just to get me a little bit more body uh, support, and uh, this is still kind. Of, this is actually kind of big. I have, I should get the pump pillow, which I didn't bring with me today. That might actually be a better option here. The pimple is a little smaller, but I was able to use this kind of as a quasi elbow rest or whatever. I missed one round on the five gallon bucket. When I was pre staging for this, trying to figure out how I would shoot it, I uh. I tried shooting it just straight up off the bucket, uh, resting the rifle forend on it. Uh, that might be the better way to go than trying to extend your bipod because you waste five seconds or so doing that. Maybe another couple seconds trying to uh, put back the tripod or retract the bipod legs. So you may, you may not want to use the bipod. And if you do, keep it extended when you start. Um, that might be the better option. Keep it extended when you start because it's not going to hit the ground here. And uh, if you rest your rifle here on the uh, tire, so you can keep it open for this. You can keep it open for this because it still won't rest on, if you don't, even if you don't use the bipod on the bucket, you could just rest the bipod forward, use it as a quasi barricade stop sort of. And then uh, you retract it here 
Um, so you save yourself about five seconds. So that's probably the better way to go. Other than that, it's a straightforward stage. You're just building five positions. One, two, three, four, five, 120 seconds. So um, I suggest practicing that and making sure you can get to position fast enough uh, every time. So it's a, I think it's a good exercise actually. This stage is really nice to exercise your ability to build your positions quickly uh, and in a very stable manner and consistently. So it's all consistent, consistency rather. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the next one. The next stage we're running through is called Laps Around America. It's 120 second part time with 12 rounds. So you're gonna need two magazines for this one uh, if, you, if you have 10 rounders only. Um, option one will be 50 yards, one and a inch and a one and a half inch and 100 yards, two and a half and a four inch. We have four targets total. Uh, one inch and one and a half at 50, two and a half and four inch at 100. Uh, you're gonna start standing, rifle log gear in hand, mag and get an action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position and engage the far targets, large to small, one shot each, and then engage the near targets, large to small, one shot each. From the following positions, strong side, support side, strong side. So basically you're gonna go one, two, three, four, switch sides, one, two, three, four, switch sides, one, two, three, four. So 12 rounds total, three iterations. 100 yards, large to small, 50 yards, large to small, switch sides, uh, 100 yards, large to small, 50 yards large small, switch sides, 100 yards large small, 50 yards large small, complete. Uh, that's pretty much it. So just a support side stage. I know a lot of people don't like these because they just don't shoot it. Uh, shoot with their left eye or their, their opposite eye rather. Uh, just practice that every now and then. I think most people are just uncomfortable because of the uh, their left eye or whatever, their recessive eye has a different focus. So you have to adjust the diopter to be more comfortable. It all depends on the uh, person. But let's go ahead and run it through and see how it goes. Forgot to reload. One oh five on the clock. Uh, relatively straightforward. Um, I was moving a little bit slower, um, so you should have plenty of time. Just uh. Be sure to make sure your rifle's lined up on target because where I felt like I lost a few seconds was when I switched sides and I didn't have the rifle correctly on target. And so when I dropped in position, I was kind of hunting a little bit. Um, just make sure that you have the rifle on target. Um, I was holding over, so I was I had it zeroed for 50 and then um, I held over for 1.7 or 1.7 mils for uh, the 100. And I, as I was mentioning earlier, you can hear me. Um, the if your eye, your left, if your if your recessive eye, or your support eye, it has a different focus in your right eye, like mine does. My diopter or my reticle won't be as clear as it is, or shit won't be clear. So if you're doing holdovers, you got to be careful. You got to make sure that if you 
If you can, adjust your reticle or your diopter on the fly. Mine I can't right now because I have this lens cap or the uh, lens cap over it. My Collis I could do it, but with this one, my ZCO, I can't right now. Um, but I can just make out the reticle hash marks with my left eye and still hold over. So that's not going to hurt me too much. But if you're somebody who has different uh, focal planes on their, on, their, on their eyes, that could be a problem for you. You may have to adjust your reticle if you're going to hold over. Otherwise, you're going to have to dial. Um, you'll lose a few seconds, but it might help you, uh, you know, on your support eye uh, sight picture. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's go ahead, and go ahead and move on to the next one. The next stage we're running through is called Tankity Tank Tank. Tank trap stage, of course. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have only a single target for this stage for option one. 58 yards, 1.5 inch target. So one and a half inch at eight, 58 yards. This is your uh, bonus point stage. So you, if you finish extra time, you get bonus points under a part time. Uh, you're going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the star signal, shoot will engage the target with two shots from the tank trap in the following manner. Center the tank trap, then each tip in no specific order, then back to the center. So two, 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 or two, 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 whatever. Anyway, center, tips, center for total 10 rounds. Um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward stage. It's all about just navigating the tank trap and finding a good position, getting it off. But as I, you should be able to finish the stage very quickly, but the goal is to get your hits, right? Don't try to beat the time as it is to get the hits because bonus points don't matter if you miss one round, right? You should get all 10 hits and finish with like just barely enough time rather than finishing with 80 seconds and getting all 10 rounds off and missing like two shots because you basically dropped 20 points there. Um, you can't get enough bonus points to make up, tw you know, 10 rounds or 10 points off a single miss. So anyway, let's go ahead and run through this and see how it goes. Missed one, or two rather. I rushed that shot right there. I don't know why I was in a hurry, but I dropped one here a little bit unstable. Um, just being off today. Finished 103 on the clock. I could have, could have, uh, could have uh, held a little bit better on those couple of those shots, but um, pretty straightforward stage. Having the second body bag definitely helps out. Um, I was actually gonna run this with Area 419. Um, maybe I'll try it right now. We'll see how it goes, but I have the Area 419 um, game changer on the rail changer uh, adapter. And uh, maybe that might work a little bit better for this, so it's less to hold. So let me, I'll, I'll do a run through, but relatively straightforward stage. Just, uh, you know, it's just making hits on the our target and from four different positions, twice on the center. So not much else to say here, but let me go grab my other bag and just try this again one more time with that, uh, with the Air Force One on bag.
drop my mag. Okay. One hundred on the clock. Actually, this is better. Believe it or not, this is actually better. No, sorry, hundred on the clock. I was actually better with this uh, Area Four One Nine rail changer and Armageddon gear. I can't remember what they call this thing. They call it the rail changer bag, but it's just an Armageddon gear uh, racer precision game changer on a uh, Arca adapter, and it just feels it's a lot easier. I mean. A lot easier and you're not holding a bag and trying to get that into place so um, i'm actually going to run this one if i remember i'll run this one for this stage just keep it on there because when you have a second bag it becomes very uh cumbersome to have hold both bags in the same hand so having it attached to the the arca rail helps out so i'm going to use it on this tank trap stage um this this uh for those of you somebody was asking me on my last video so i just got this about a month ago this is the um coal pack mega bag i bought it just without the fill and i got the fill from like uh, joann's which is basically a car arts and crafts store and uh it's basically beanbag fill and uh this is actually really good for a body bag type thing so this is actually uh coming in useful coming in very handy it's very expensive all things considering but if you're uh very uh savvy and uh have some skills um, like Matt, aka Wonfat, on YouTube, he uh, I think he makes his own. He made a bag similar to this. I mean, I'm sure it cost him a fraction of what I paid for this. So, um, if you can sell, I would sell one because uh, it's not really much to this. I'm um, granted, I'm sure there's uh, quality of stitching here. <laughs> and if I were like 20 years younger, back when I actually did know how to sew, I could probably come up with this again. But anyway, um, that's how I'm gonna run this stage probably. So this second run through, I'm gonna use the area 419 rail changer bag for the tank trap stage. And then I'll use this as my body support. Uh, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the next one. Next stage of fire we're gonna run through is called have a barrel of fun. This is 120 second part time with 12 rounds. So you got 120 second or 120 points on this stage. Uh, we have a single target uh, for option one. It's two inches at 79 yards. You're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with three shots in the following prop order. Any, lagger, any ladder rung, 55 gallon barrel, a different ladder rung, 55 gallon barrel. So three, 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 three. It's pretty straightforward. Just pick whichever two uh, ladder rungs are most comfortable for you. Uh, most likely the lowest one if you want to shoot prone. Um, but uh, it's up for every shooter. It's, uh, you know, it's personal preference. Anyway, let's go ahead and run through this and see how it goes. I think I clipped it. Wow. 
Wow, timed out. It's actually a tougher stage than I thought. Uh, I think it's because I'm fumbling around. Sorry. It's a little tougher stage than I thought. It's, I'm fumbling around with uh, this position here. I'm just not really, uh, I guess I'm just I'm not sure how I'm going to approach this. Whether this is a, more of a detriment than anything. Uh, it does help me out on the ladder stage. So I kind of want to retain this, but I need to practice how I'm going to shoot this. And it's a little big struggle because this barrel rolls on this concrete. Um, but I guess that's part of the part of the challenge here, right? So uh, I just need to practice with this a little bit more. But this stage, uh, you're establishing four positions, four different positions, basically one, two, three, and four, or you're establishing positions four different times. So uh, definitely an exercise here. I would certainly practice if you got a barrel or something at home, like a round trash can at home, I would try to practice off of it and see how you're going to get in your positions here. I'm still not sure how I like to shoot off of this. Um, I like to lean, I like to pull back the rifle. That's why I try to use my bipod so I can pull the barrel into me, use this as a support and just kind of hug that for, for stability, but I get a little tight on my body, but I don't know if it's working out for me, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to play around with this a little bit and see how it goes or as far as how I can perfect my position here. Sorry, I'm fiddling around with my microphone. It's just broken. I dropped it one too many times. I just got a glue in place or something. Anyway, uh, definitely a stage that you need to be uh, weary of or aware of when you, uh, if you're going to shoot this month's or the July course of fire. Just be aware of this stage. All right, let me uh, go ahead and just do some stuff off camera. Just try to fiddle around with some of the uh, how I'm going to approach this stage and then uh, we'll move on to the fifth and final stage. I figured out how I'm going to shoot this. Um, basically keep the bipod legs extended. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to manipulate this through the ladder, but um, basically I'm going to have the bipod legs about as far close as you can get them like this. They're extended down. So um, it's going to allow me to bring the rifle in just barely into the ladder rung and not have to manipulate the bipod. It's going to take a little bit of maneuvering uh, to clear, but I should be able to get it. And what this is going to allow me to do is get into position here and ride this, the bipod, as, as my support here on top of the magazine. Or, I mean, just basically hug the barrel. And what I can do here is I'm going to be able to use this bag 
we'll push back and then pull back into the bag keep the barrel tight to the body and then uh get some support here and if i need to i can push the barrel forward and keep this bag kind of in between me and the barrel and it'll allow me to move the barrel and then still maintain tight support and what i was able to find is really stable pretty stable as far as position is concerned so i can get off some good shots in this position i missed that one anyway uh this should work out i think the only flaw here though when i did that run through is i did the magazine change so i put 10 and 2. you don't want to do 10 and 2 because when i get to this barrel if i have 10 and 2 i basically shoot three 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 so that's nine rounds my 10th round is going to be fired right here you don't want to do mag change there so you probably want to go 10 just have a 10 rounder if you don't have a 12 round magazine you're going to run like more than three, three or more rounds in your second mag. So you do three, three, three mag change and get into position to fire the last three rounds. Cause you don't wanna have to break position a fifth time to get a single, get your uh, magazine change. So that's one thing to keep, uh, keep in mind. Anyway, one more stage and we're done. The fifth and final stage we're running through is called take it for a spin, 120 seconds, 10 rounds. We've got five targets, three distances. We have the quarter inch and half inch KYL at 30 yards, and then we have the three quarter inch and one inch at KYL at 60 yards, and then a two inch at 80 yards. So 30, 60, 80. On, uh, standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On start signal, the shooter will take a prone supported position and engage the targets in the following order. Middle targets, large to small, one shot each, so 60 yards. Near targets, uh, large to small one shot each so that's 30 yards then far target with one shot then the shooter will re-engage the targets again in the same manner all sh shots are hit to move on so you basically have to make the hit in order to move on um pretty easy stage or straightforward stage of fire um just middle near far middle near far and just run through the targets one shot each and then hit to hit to move on let's go and run through this and we'll be done with the uh, course of fire I don't know, I barely nicked it, I think. Just barely. I barely nicked that target, I'm pretty sure. I'll look at that on video, but either way, it's a very straightforward stage, although I still only had 12 seconds left. So pretty close, I don't say it's pretty close to timing out, but it's kind of up there in the time. I think the issue at hand here for me is for this range, we're having to adjust, for this facility, we're having to adjust the height of our guns because of the incline. So the, the closest target, 30 yards on f relatively level ground, the other two targets are on an upper level. So we lose, at least the competitors at this match, 
at our match, they're gonna lose time because of that. So you're shooting the middle, which is at upper elevation. So you gotta kind of adjust to that. Then you're gonna shoot the middle, or sorry, the near, which is going to be lower elevation. So you gotta stack for that, or get the butt up. Then far, and then middle again, near and far. So you're kind of gonna do that constantly. And then for me, aside from that, it's just gonna be parallax adjustment. I was holding over the target. Uh, you don't want to have to dial elevation here because you've been messing around with the parallax. So, and my magnification. I was dialing to be uh, to be perfectly honest. I was dialing it pretty high for um, a higher power for the near targets and for the KYLs rather because they're pretty small. Like three quarter, uh, even three quarters at what is that sixty yards is still going to be kind of small. So, um, I needed some magnification for that just for me. Um, so I was dialing magnification as well at certain points and I had to dial back to get to find my uh, the ADR target in my field of view. So anyway, it's a relatively straightforward stage. Uh, so I don't think you'll have too many problems with this. Uh, not really not really many other tips I can give you here. Just hold over, um, just quickly adjust your parallax as soon as you can and you should be good to go. Uh, but that pretty much sums up this course of fire. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling it all in. It is getting really hot out here. Um, it's not hot, very temperature wise. It's not bad. It's only about 90 something, but it's very humid out here and I've been drinking a ton of water. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean up and then, uh, we'll wrap this up. I'm all packed up, ready to get out of here. Condus containers uh, sealed up as far as the, uh, July, 2021 course of fire, about average difficulty. I would say the most difficult one's going to be, uh, probably the latter stage with the barrel stage. Um, or the the one with the tire, the two buckets, the chair, and the sawhorse. Um, that one had you're basically building five positions and shooting on one target. And I think that's the one uh, thing that people um, are kind of like, hey, yeah, this stage is easy because there's only one target. But the thing is, if you look at it closely, these stages are coming out with a lot more uh, position breaks, right? You're breaking from position, establishing new position, and therefore that's probably more difficult because if you're static, it's not that difficult to just swing your scope over your rifle over to the next target and shoot, right? Uh, when you're breaking position constantly, I think that's the most difficult aspect, and I think what's, that's what NRL 22 should probably keep going, keep doing. I think having lots of targets is great, but on a single stage, making newer or you know these 22 shooters who haven't shot PRS or in center fire, teaching them how to you know how the importance of establishing a position, being able to establish a position consistently and effectively, that's going to be the the next step up as far as. Uh, beyond the basic fundamentals of marksmanship, right? So, uh, yeah, I think this is average difficulty. So those that, that first stage, the one with the multiple uh, props or the chair or the ladder and barrel, probably the two most difficult. The prone stages are relatively simple. The tank trap, I think, is easy enough. And most people shot off that style of tank trap stage they've done where you just shoot off the center and each tip. That's relatively uh, the most one of the most common tank trap stages they've had in the NRL 22 history. So. I think most people are familiar with that one, so that one should be too difficult. That's about average, so. Anyway, uh, not much else to say here. Uh, nothing really administrative, uh, no real changes to the matches. Um, same for Sunday of every month, SoCal, uh, NRL22.org is a web URL that I got just for an FAQ and an info page. Just for people who have, uh, you know, constantly ask the same questions, just refer to that link. It's got the link to the practice score pages where we do the registrations. So I've, I've pretty much uh, gotten a nice way of communicating with people. We've got an email list going. So uh, just to, for people to get be uh, notified when the uh, registrations have opened for the next match. So uh, hopefully I got all those admin details worked out as far as trying to make things uh, visible for people. Anyway, that's it for today. Today is June 30th, Wednesday, here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.